In this video, we'll meet Fraser Sundown, and he will share with us some teachings and techniques of the traditional art of corn husk doll making. Sagali Swagwig, Mujata Guido Neon Yats, Anawal Nivagita Lode, Anyata Aga Nivagahon Jode. Sagali, greetings, everybody. My name is Fraser Sundown. I come from the Oneida Nation, and I'm of the Turtle Clan. I've been working with corn husk for a number of years now. A lot of my life I've been doing corn husk and how I got into it, uh, doll making specifically, is that uh, uh, there were some folks that knew that I that I worked with corn husk. Someone approached me um, to make um, two uh, pieces for their wedding cake. And those were my first two dolls that I that I made. What I usually start with is the head. There's there's no said way where to start or how to start. Um, this is just where I start and I take my corn husks. I work with them wet because they're really durable when they're wet. If you work with it dry, it cracks and it, and it becomes, and it can rip very easily. But when corn husk is wet, it becomes very durable. So this is going to be the head. So that it creates like a, a ball. I roll them up into like a ball like this. Before I started, I laid out these strips of, uh, sinew. So it's good to have these handy and nearby. So that ball's now rolled up into this. And what I'm going to do is tie a piece of sinew around, around here. And this is going to create the head here. It's definitely going to look messy. This, you know, at first it's going to look uneven and not right. But as you go along, you start to adjust and, uh, and it starts to take its shape that it's supposed to. This is one of my good pieces. And, and this piece represents me and who I am because he's working with the twining like that I do, the basket weaving type. And uh, he's got some items here. And uh, I guess that's like a representation of myself. I grew up in, in the, on the Tonawanda Indian Reservation in New York. And uh, that's where I got a lot of this uh, knowledge and uh, I guess this uh, yearning for culture. I learned a lot of, a lot about uh, corn husk, what it's all about, the dolls and all that, the story that I have that goes with that came from there. You know, corn husk dolls are important. And that's why I feel like it's important to, to keep them alive with, with my art forms that I do. And because uh, that story teaches a good lesson about who we are as individuals and, and to not look at anybody higher or, or lower than anybody or, or be try to be higher than anybody. That's what that story is all about. And so they say that there was a young girl who was in our in our villages in the beginning, I guess, uh, uh, shortly after creation. This young lady would um, go to the water and she would look at her reflection in the water. She saw the beauty in herself that the creator made her. And so she really admired that. And she started to uh, to think highly of herself. I think she was she would go back to the village from from visiting visiting the water and she and she would think she was better than any anybody else because she was always looking at herself always admiring herself and she would go back and then her grandmother had told her that if you keep acting that way then something is going to happen you'll have consequences of of what's what's going to happen why you keep acting that way why you keep acting better and and more i guess uh you know conceited in that way and so uh and so she would always go back and visit the water and the one time she went back after hearing that from her grandmother they say that she was just just there for longer than usual still admiring herself and just trying to fix her fix her um fix her face up uh, off the off the uh, reflection there and they say that there was a, a crow or a raven that that came down and and swooped in the water her face and and that's what they say that, that she's seen the splashes in her face in the water of her reflection and they say that what had happened in that moment was that that raven or crow i guess took the face took her face and then so she when she looked back in her reflection after that raven flew away her face was not there anymore and and so we make this doll in a reminder of that story 
and uh, that there's consequences that to remind us that we're not greater than each other, that we're all the same, and that we all we're all just to to um, admire the the beauty that the Creator had already made for us, and so that's what this doll is all about. The best way is to learn it orally. Go and visit. Go and visit those elders. A good person to go and visit is is like Elizabeth Dockstader. Um, she's always there to share, and she made this exhibit that has all the fifty chiefs and clan mothers, and they're uh, I believe they're holding up the tree of peace. They're all surrounding it, and it tells that story. They are sacred. The story is very sacred and traditional, and so that's that's a. Uh, you know, its main purpose is to keep that story alive. As, uh, you know, Haudenosaunee people, we're, we're in an oral society, and that's that's the way we pass on our ways. You know, this was like, um, I guess, the story inside of this doll. That's what it is. It's it, this, The doll is the story. <laughs> Oh,